Hey everybody, how you doing? My name is Charlie and today we are going over airway maintenance. More specifically, we're going to go over proper BVM technique and the LMA Supreme placement. So we're going to get started out here and I'm going to pause the video a little early just to talk about what our you know, first responders did, you walk up on scene and this is what you see. They're bagging this patient and what do we notice? We notice that the patient is properly positioned. And how do we notice that? Well, what we're looking for in proper positioning of the patient is the oral pharyngeal, pharyngeal and laryngeal axis are all in line and in our adult patients. The way we're going to do that is as you can see, they have a little bit of a sheet or a pillow or you know, some sheets folded up underneath the patient's occipital lobe. That's going to put all these axes in line as soon as you displace the mandible upwards. So let's talk about how he's bagging the patient. So he's got this EC clamp going on, something that we've all been taught really early on in our medical training. EC clamp, you got three fingers on the bony prominence of the mandible, displacing it upwards. You got the other two fingers encompassing the BVM mask getting a proper seal up there and trying to get the best seal possible just with that one hand while also ventilating the patient. So let's continue on and see what we see. So he's bagging the patient, really easy going, but there's something else we can do. We can understand that there is a good way to bag somebody. We can understand that there's a better way to bag somebody and we can understand that there is a best way to bag somebody. And we're going to go over all of these. And the first thing you have to understand is, does this patient have a gag reflex? If, if they do, we're going to go over the good way to bag somebody. And that's with the use of an oral pharyngeal airway. You can see my partner here, he's using one right now. We had a little conversation over lubrication of the oral airway. And that's something that, you know, if you guys have been taught it, if you guys think it works, uh, you know, use it. If you don't, don't. Either way, it's going to get placed and it's going to be fine going in. Just remember that you got to put it at a 90 degree angle. Be sure to not displace the tongue backwards. That's something that we're actually trying to prevent. So uh, place it in, make sure he doesn't have a gag reflex, make sure he's not trying to you know, choke down this thing. And then we're going to go on to the better way to bag somebody. And that's with the use of an NPA or a nasal pharyngeal airway. Lube it up, bevel inwards, make sure it's properly seated without resistance. And that's the better way, next way, the best way, and that's going to be the use of three adjuncts when we're ventilating somebody. And that's two NPAs, one OPA, and that's not two NPAs and one nair, that's two NPAs, two nairs, one OPA. And you can see he goes right back to the EC clamp technique or the one handed technique. Something that's good, we've been all been taught it, but there is an even better way to bag somebody and we're about to go over it. Give a couple rescue breaths, make sure it's going in nice and easy. And here is the even better way to bag somebody. This is the two-handed technique taught to us by multiple critical care companies as well as the MCRIT podcast. This is two-handed technique or the two-thumb technique. You can see how he puts the BVM under his right elbow. He uses two thumbs on the masts, puts eight fingers on the brony prominence of both sides of that mandible, displaces it upwards, Make sure there's a good seal on both sides, something the EC clamp doesn't do. It only does it on the one side that your hand is doing it. And this puts two thumbs on the mask, creating a complete seal around the mask. And we're looking to be able to ventilate them ourselves. So this is actually what you're going to see, you know, when we look at it without the BVM. So say you're passing the BVM to somebody else. You're trying to coach them through bagging the patient and you just want to get the complete seal yourself. This is what you're going to do. Two thumbs on the mask, eight fingers on the mandible, lifting it upwards, three adjuncts, and that will be the best possible way to protect an airway. 
Now we're going over the best way to protect an airway with an extra glottic device. More specifically, the LMA Supreme. So we're going to start off from where we were. So we're bagging the patient. We're using the best possible BVM technique with the two NPAs, the one OPA. And this time we're using the EC clamp. It's totally okay. Both are fine. But the patient is at a saturation of 100%. So if we think back to our oxyhemoglobin desaturation curve and desaturation for normal adults, we have upwards of two minutes before this patient starts to desaturate. And in that time interval, what you could do is get your airway ready. So you want to get out your LMA Supreme, make sure it's appropriately sized for adults, which it will be around a three or four. Most likely for adults, it'll be a four and it'll come in pre-inflated. But what I want you to do is inflate it yourself. So you're gonna, when you inflate it, you're gonna look for any breaks, tears, leaks, anything like that. I want you to inflate it, feel the cuff, look for damages, and then you're gonna deflate it. You're gonna take it in your hand and you're gonna squeeze it down and that's gonna give it this nice flat look and it's gonna give it anatomically correct positioning to be placed into the airway. Just prior to placement, you're gonna remove the OPA and you're gonna lubricate the posterior aspect and even up the tube a little, as well as the anterior aspect of the airway. And prior to placing any Airway, you want to make sure you have your ETCO2 on prior to putting it prior to insertion. And then for insertion, I want you to place it in the mandible. You don't have to stick your fingers in. And I want you to slide it against the hard palate, sliding it all the way in until you meet resistance. Once you meet resistance, it's fully seated, leave it there. After that, you want to make sure that it's properly placed and it's two, the fixation tab is two centimeters above the upper lip. It's two centimeters to one and a half centimeters above the upper lip. Then you're going to inflate. And I want you to watch the way my partner inflates. He's going to inflate and he's going to feel. It's more of a feel than anything. I don't want you to feel to max pressures and cause a lot of structural damage. I want you to feel and there should be a little bit of play between your two fingers and the bulb itself. Okay. Next is fixation. You're going to tape it down and you can tape it down after you've confirmed or prior to confirming that you have had it in the correct place. And now you're going to ventilate. When you put the BVM on, I want you guys to check for ETCO2, check for equal and bilateral chest rise and make sure you have ETCO2 confirmation and that you have this airway placed correctly. And as you can see, our NPAs are still in, but you can easily remove them. Just go ahead and slip them on out. They're really not gonna help anything, but they're not gonna damage anything either. Now we're gonna listen to lung sounds. Be sure that there are equal and bilateral lung sounds on the anterior chest, as well as the axillary lobes. Also be sure that there are no epigastric movement upon ventilation. And the next step in this is pretty much the last step after you've confirmed everything, and that's going to be suctioning through the LMA Supreme. What we're going to first start off with is the suprasternal notch test. And with the suprasternal notch test, what you're going to do is place a small amount of lubrication on the drainage port of the LMA Supreme. And then you're going to find your suprasternal notch. It's going to be the most superior portion of your chest in between your clavicles and you're going to depress it downwards and that's going to allow air to go back up into the drainage port of the LMA Supreme and create bubbles that you could see right there. So now you know you're in the correct place. You're going to be able to gastrically suction this patient. Don't forget to properly measure from the stomach to the top of the port lubricate it and insert until you meet resistance or till you've met your marker. Once you've met your marker, don't forget to confirm it just how you would ev any other suctioning device. Be sure to make sure that it's in the stomach and we haven't accidentally uh, placed it in the trachea, but with the LMA Supreme, it's virtually impossible to tracheally suction through the drainage port. 
So after you've placed it, we're going to appease the trauma gods by securing it down, how we secure down everything in the back of this bumpy ambulance, and then you're going to be able to suction. So remember when you're suctioning, be sure that it's properly placed prior to and that you have secured it down, and then you can start suctioning. And that is the end.